I met my ex-partner when we were 17 years old. Um, we were actually married for 21 years. Um, we had three children. Um, they, they were the product of that marriage. The abuse started really, really early into the relationship. It started about three months into the relationship. Um, and the, it started with physical violence, actually, to start with. Um, it, I think it was a way of controlling me, basically. Because we worked in the same workplace, he didn't like um, me to have attention from other people. So that was definitely one of the controllers at the beginning. Um, with that, coupled with that, became the emotional abuse. Um, so ways of actually stripping my character away, I suppose, was a good way of describing it. Um, I was always the girl that worked, you know, I worked in a department store at the time. I was always the girl that wore the bright yellow tights and I was always the girl that wore the bright red tights and all of a sudden I'd become this dowdy person. Um, always the one that wore, you know, honestly I was like a rainbow, my, my, eye, my eye shadow at that time, but it was the 80s very much, um, was quite sort of out there. Um, I was a visual merchandise at the time, so quite quite trendy, quite a good job, you know, and quite soon um, I became the ca a character that I wasn't, actually. Um, it, was, it was really strange because being in the role that I was, I was actually in at that, that time, um, quite often we'd have to work late and he wouldn't work late. And um, as I say, I was, I was a visual work merchandiser. He used to actually sit outside the window watching, watching me work which is really bizarre and freaky. Um, but that's, that's probably a context of how, how my life developed with him, really. It was that constant under the spotlight, constantly being watched, um, constantly being picked up on from ways you behaved, um, how you actually worked with other colleagues. Um, and that's been the way it has been all the way through, through my relationship with him. When I went to university, and I was determined, I was absolutely determined that I was going to make a better life for myself. And you know, even though it was hard, it you know, it was it was difficult to go to university and to come home and be abused because I'd been to university because you know I was having sex with everybody at university, or I was doing this, or I was doing that, I was doing the other. I was absolutely determined that that was, that was my long-term plan of getting out of that relationship. The only way I was going to do it was actually to make myself financially sufficient to get out of that relationship. You know, obviously I've got a good career now, um, which was probably the point of when everything started to break down. Because as soon as I'd, I'd got myself a, a really good job, um, his insecurities came out even more than ever. And he was determined that, you know, I should give up my job. I was constantly being told to give up my job. Um, if only, I, you know, if I wasn't doing that stupid job, then everything would be fine. If I just went back to making roast dinners, everything would be fine. Um, and obviously I was, I was changing, I was evolving as a person, I was growing as a person. Even though being under the constant spotlight of negativity, of you know being told how worthless you are, um, the constant name calling as well it was horrible. Constantly t telling you what you looked like and how disgusting you were, and that you know you're a slag, you're a slut, you were this, you were that. Constantly. And as I say, it's that part that actually, for me, has taken the longest to get over, because it completely wipes your confidence out. Um, you know, where you, you can't even, I didn't even want to walk out, you know, it's sort of, well, what's the, walk out the door, what's, what's the point? There's no point even attempting to dress well because, you know, you just feel so, so worthless. And it's almost linked to, as well to depression, I should, I should imagine, you know, because that's the way I felt. I felt very depressed, I felt as if there was no escape from it, you know, contemplated suicide. Um, because I just thought, how do I get out of this? I cannot no longer live with this situation. Yes, he'd constantly contact me at work, constantly. I'd get the text messages, I'd get phone calls. You know, um, if I disclosed anything that, you know, I was having a meeting with somebody, then he'd, he'd, he'd it was absolutely disgusting because, you know, it'd be, I would be having sex with this person or doing this with this person. 
completely irrational behaviour on his part, but yeah, I would have that. Where I'd, I'd sort of, but if he didn't respond, it was worse than, it, it was really strange because they almost have a hold over you. And you have to respond because if you don't, well, the chances are he probably would have turned up and the abuse would have been worse when I got home. Makeup was great, of course, because um, as being a woman, of course, I can wear makeup, so it covered. So when when I'd been when he thrown the mobile phone at my face, I could cover all that because just with makeup and put extra lipstick on, so it, it covered that. Um, it was also quite quite clever though because they are um, in where they hit you. So a lot of the, a lot of the you couldn't actually see, you couldn't see any of the the bruising on my legs or, or whatever. And if there was any, I'd hide it because I didn't want anybody to know what was going on. Um, it was Mother's Day. It was the, the, the day after Mother's Day, and I just I felt as if I couldn't cope with it any longer. Um, and I remember I walked into work, and. I approached my manager, he was a fairly new line manager to me, I'd only had him about three weeks, and um, I'd gone to him about work things, and I suppose in my own way, I'd gone to him, I wanted help, so I made an excuse to go and see him, and I turned up and I was going through my work stuff and then just broke down, and I said to, to him, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't cope with this, and I think he thought I meant work, and I said, no, my whole life. And I, now, now when I look back, now that I'm thinking about it, I was actually absolutely overdressed that day when, when I actually, I did, I did speak to him um, to hide the marks because, um, because he'd, he'd been to our house on Mother's Day and we didn't do what he wanted to do. Um, I was then, I was, he assaulted me. Um, so when... I remember taking my, my sock off um, because my foot was in a, in a where he'd stamped on it and ground on it. It was really, really sore, and I, I showed it to, to my boss. And I just said, "I can't, I can't deal with this. Can't cope with it anymore." And he was absolutely brilliant.